Listen, I, I saw the film the other day. Uh, I wanted to see it because I, I saw the, uh, you know, I read about it at Sundance and I would like to know, Alex, what was the impact of having your film uh, so well received at the Sundance Film Festival? Uh, it was an extraordinary feeling. Just getting into Sundance is the reward itself. Um, but then for it to get the kind of um, critical and, and audience response that it did and and for Jesmark's performance to be recognized with the acting award, um, that was more, you know, than we had ever really dreamed of. Um, making a film from such a small country that really doesn't produce cinema like this, um, you know, it always felt like the, the odds were stacked against us. And then to so quickly be embraced was a bit dizzying, to be honest. Um, we were just happy to be there. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, all the eyes turned towards us and it was a really beautiful moment. Uh, I'll never forget it. How close to reality is, uh, is the film you think, uh, Just Mark? Is it, uh, considering that, it, that you, you were selected as a person who's not a professional actor, or you were not, maybe now you are, right, I guess? <laughs> well, uh, the film is quite close. Uh, obviously, there's the black market thing, so that's a story we made up. Um, it's not really what I do, but the struggles of fishing are there, the declining numbers, climate change, those are all there. The import of salmon, as you hear in the film, you know, those are all real. Um, so especially the first part of the film is quite close to reality. Because your character faces a lot of... Uh... I mean, he's put into a lot of pressure because the reality is making him, his life miserable. So he really needs to fight. It's a story of fighting, I guess, fighting for survival. Well, it, it is, you know, you're always in a battle with something. It's either the weather, it's either not catching fish, it's either you went to a particular place for fishing and you found someone else before you. There's always that fight you need to win, you know? Um, well, in reality, it's, it's not as hard as you see in the film, you know? Yeah. It's not impossible to do it, but we went, we went a bit overboard with the struggles, so we can really deliver the message about the struggles of traditional fishing. So. I think it's a, Alex, I think it's a, a great tribute to the culture of Mount Aussie and uh, the impact that the European Union could have in certain sectors of it, the industry, like the fish, the fishing industry in Malta was really affected by certain laws, right? Yeah, I mean, it was fascinating for me to learn about it. Um, something I heard early on, of course, was, you know, the fishermen had to go from the world of the sea to the world of paper. And these meticulous fishing logs, for example, have to be made as a result of being part of the EU um, because the regulations are so strict and um, they have to account for every fish that they bring to land. Um, it's the, the kind of absurdities of the laws that seem to be written very far away from where the fishing is ha happening to the realities on the ground or the realities on the sea, as it were, um, those um, continually surprised me in the research and just begged to be put on screen. Like in one of the key sequences about, you know, catching the right fish at the wrong time and yeah. being faced with this agonizing decision of just needing to throw it back into the sea, which is 100% true and it happens and it can happen for a variety of reasons and that you couldn't even bring it in to feed your own family with. Um, like the swordfish, it was very sad. The swordfish. It's sad and absurd. And, um, and that just, when I heard that scenario, I just had to put it on screen, um, you know? Why, why did you decide to work with non-professional actors? Um, I decided to work with non-professional actors in a way because um, I had the courage that it would work from all the films that I loved of the people who'd done it before. It was a great tradition of it. And it seemed that that's what we should do in Malta. Uh, again, for a country that has made so few films and even fewer films that have ever gotten international attention, um, 
to put the real people on the screen, I thought was such an important opportunity. And as it, you know, relates to this, these specific roles, the physical demands were so extreme that an actor, no matter how much training they did, would never be able to do, but just Mark and the other fisherman, David, what they do in this film, um, they just physically wouldn't be able to, to perform it. Uh, you know, there's a brilliant moment where they're pulling the swordfish in and just Mark puts the fishing line in his mouth. And I, I never, as a screenwriter, would have been able to come up with that. And right. uh, an actor wouldn't have done that, right? So it's those kinds of surprises, the things that go beyond fiction somehow, the, that, that level of detail is what this film needed and non-actors give you that in spades. And most importantly, they give you the emotional truth. It's a, that really unlocked the whole film is getting the straight story, the emotional truth from Jess Mark and David. It's almost like a documentary or cinema verite. Or were you influenced by the Italians in a way? Oh yeah, big time. And it's sort of bedrock. It's somehow deep inside me and what my conception of what cinema does best really comes back to the post-war Italian films. Um, and, you know, they're, I, I don't quite buy into all the distinctions between documentary and fiction. The first three minutes of this film, it's just Jesmark fishing and there's no dialogue. And it was always designed that way at the script level, just to almost feel like a documentary. But it is really just Mark fishing and he's actually a fisherman. So is it fiction or, the, you know, or is it documentary? I, I can't quite tell. I guess it's both. It's yeah. a, a story that you want to tell in a very realistic way without any, uh, any uh, Hollywood tricks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Maybe. That's real, real fish coming up, you know, when you see the fish come out of the water. Um, that fish wasn't hired to do that. That's, that's a real fish. He was going about his day and he got caught. So, <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. So just Mark, your future would be more into acting or you're going to combine it, what you do now with acting or how do you see it? Uh, it's going to be more acting combined with what I do rather than what I do combined with acting. So, Fishing will still remain the number one job, you know, or, or anything fish related. So acting will just fit in around my normal days. Right. But uh, would you pursue acting or have they, yes. have they been offering you other parts, other possibilities? I had another possibility. I had another offer, which yeah. I took exactly after shooting Lutzo. Uh, then COVID came, so everything came to a halt. And after COVID, not yet, but I'm still open for any acting job that come up. Was it difficult for you to, to interpret this character or you just were being yourself or how did it work? Interpreting the character wasn't that hard. The fishing scenes, I was fishing. So, yeah, you know, go, like Alex said, putting the line in my mouth, that's something I would do naturally. In fact, it wasn't even scripted. Like, where did that come out from, you know? Um, some scenes were a bit harder to do because I'm not an actor when it comes to doing some, some things on camera. It's not like you're doing it every day. But the way we worked, not keeping a fixed script, not keeping anything like you didn't have to go around. You did five steps, so you have to do another five steps. If you did six, if you did four, as long as it works, it's good. Then that really helped. So I think that that was the most thing that made it easy in a way, you know. That's really cool. Alex, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we normally edit a little story with this for Screen Slam, and we use the director's description of the film. So could you tell us what is Lusu about? And we can use your, your narration for, for the story. Sure. 
Well, Lutsu tells the story of a small scale fisherman in Malta named Jesmark. He's having trouble with his boat and just trying to make ends meet when he and his wife learn that their newborn son has a growing issue and it's gonna require expensive treatment that's beyond their limited means. So in order to try to hold his family together, uh, Jesmark is led down a path um, into the black market fishing in Malta and ultimately comes up against a choice about whether he can abandon his traditions in order to survive. Great. Would you say that uh, films are uh, in an international language? I mean, this film could be understood anywhere in the world, doesn't matter if you're in Europe or in Africa or in Asia. So there's a universal language maybe through films? Oh, I believe so. Um, I believe that in my core. I, I, I do think that cinema is our universal language. You know, the moving image doesn't really care what, what language you speak. Um, before cultures had language themselves, they were first, you know, drawing images on the sides of caves. You know, um, we learned to do that even before we, we could, you know, speak with the kinds of languages that we have today. Uh, so there's something very fundamental about it, and it, it informs in, in the, even in the, the making of this film in 2021, um, how to tell a story with images, um, how to portray emotion. Uh, these are the things that I was really preoccupied with. Um, there's a universality, I think, to the themes. That's part of the universality, but even in the filmmaking, and the kind of performance that Jesmark gives often without any dialogue and in the subtlest way he can communicate a lot. The physicality and the blocking, the relationship between the characters and the space on screen. Um, these were all really important parts of our filmmaking approach because we wanted this story to work anywhere. Um, and it's uh, cinema can do that. And, in, and uh, hopefully the, the success of the film has just given one more proof point to that theory. It's an amazing film. I loved it. And uh, I was maybe, why don't you do a sequel? <laughs> it would be fun. <laughs> you know, we've, we've been entertaining a number of pitches. People come up to us and they, everyone's got a pitch for what, what the second film is. And uh, it's, uh, it's kind of become a little bit of a parlor game for, for those of us on the crew. Like who's, who's heard the best pitch? <laughs> 